Hello, I'm Chris Matherall, I'm the BSBI recorder for North Northumberland and I've been asked by the Natural History Society of Northumbria to make some short films about the plants that you might be able to go out and see now that lockdown has been a little bit relaxed. And I was especially asked to come to some dunes by someone who wanted to know about the plants you get in dune systems. And here I am in Walkworth, which is, which is some of the best dunes uh, in North Northumberland. And I'm going to start by looking at a plant over here, which is very typical of dunes in Northumberland, and it's a particularly lovely plant. Now this, is, as you can see, is a rose, and uh, it's the typical rose of sand dunes, which is Burnet Rose, Rosa spinosissima in Latin, which is a jolly good name for it, because it's covered in short but very sharp spines, and there are an awful lot of them, it's very spiny, spinosissima. Um, roses have a reputation for being difficult, difficult to identify, I mean, um, and I'm, it's not my favourite set of plants. I find them difficult too. I'm told they grow on you, but um, I haven't uh, really got a grip on quite a lot of them because they hybridise. But this one, on the whole, doesn't. And it's a very pretty rose. Um, it's a typical of sand dunes. And you see this white, beautiful white, um, large flowers uh, sitting up amongst the marum grass. And this, of course, is marum, which is... Uh, the, the standard grass of sand dunes, very, very tough grass. Um, the leaves look as though they're, they're, um, they're cylindrical. In fact, they're wrapped around, they're flat, but they're curled round so tightly that it's very difficult to see that they're not a complete cylinder. Um, you can open them with your fingernail and ensure that they are actually flat. But we're not going to talk too much about grass. I much prefer to look at the burnet rose. It's much prettier. Now the plant I've got in my hand now, one I picked earlier, is Thrift, another common sand dune plant. Not just on sand dunes, we get it on rocks really close to the sea, it doesn't even mind getting its feet wet in the, in the sea if the tide comes up. Uh, and it's uh, a beautiful little plant. You might grow it on your rockery, you can grow it on ours. Uh, it's, it's quite happy uh, inland on rockeries, but really this is one of those plants where you absolutely need a hand lens to bring it to life. If you look at it from a distance, the flowers have this light lilac colour and they look papery. But you need to get your hand lens out to see why that is. And if I look at the, the flower head, I can see that it's made up of this one, probably ten flowers. And underneath that bunch of ten flowers, are five very papery structures. They've got a slightly darker line in the centre. So that makes a bowl in which all those little flowers sit. And each individual flower has also got a rather papery, translucent structure attached to the base of each one. And then the flowers themselves are also very papery petals. So the whole thing looks as though it's a piece of origami rather than a plant. They really are very beautiful when you look at them under a hand lens. So this is Thrift, Armeria maritima. Now I'm standing next to a patch of scurvy grass, not a very nice name, and <laughs> as with many English names, although it's very good for scurvy, it's not a grass. Uh, it's a member of the cabbage family we've seen. Quite a few members of the cabbage family, and this one has small white flowers just like the rest of them. Four white petals on a cross. And in the UK, this one is found really, it's a salt marsh plant. I'm standing on the edge of the sand dunes here, uh, next to a salt marsh, which is just over there. And so this is on the margin between the two. And it's called scurvy grass because it's full of vitamin C. And uh, if you uh, prone to scurvy or going on a long voyage and you run out of lemons and oranges you could eat scurvy grass and it would stop you getting ill. I have to tell you I don't recommend it. It tastes absolutely disgusting. Give me oranges every day. 
Um, this is Cochlearia officinalis, common scurvy grass, but you'll almost certainly have seen another one because if you are driving around almost anywhere on a major road in the UK these days, in the spring, May, you will see rows of light purple, slightly pinky, tiny little flowers on the edges of the motorways and on the central reservations. Those are scurvy grass. It's because we spread so much salt, and these are salt tolerant plants, that they've al it's allowed the expansion of scurvy grass along our main trunk roads and motorways. That in fact is Cochlearia danica, Danish scurvy grass, but not our uh, common scurvy grass that we've got next to me here. Well, I'm sitting next to some kidney vetch, uh, Anthelis vulneraria in Latin, and uh, it grows on sand dunes. It's very common on sand dunes in Northumberland, but it also grows in other places too. Uh, it's called kidney vetch because the, uh, the groups of flowers, and they're clustered together, as you can see, in, in uh, quite dense heads, uh, are faintly kidney shaped. It's not a very good name really. Um, it's traditionally it's uh, for use for uh, curing wounds and Phyllis vulneraria. Vulneraria means wound or, uh, or is derived from the word for wound. Um, as you can see it's a yellow, lovely little yellow pea flower. Uh, it has um, the calices, but sort of green bits behind the um, uh, the corollas, the flowers, very often are red, and sometimes the whole flower is red. If you go to Anglesey, on the dunes on the west coast of Anglesey, you'll see they're all red. Um, and the seed pods, which being a pea flower, of course, are like little pea-shaped pods, are tiny. I mean, they're only three millimeters long. It's too early to see those because we're filming this in late May. Um, and it's a very important plant ecologically because it's the only food plant of the small blue butterfly or the caterpillars of the small blue butterfly. So in order to have small blues, you have to have uh, lots of kidney vetch. And kidney vetch is doing very well this year. It's 2020 and there's loads of it about. So it should be a good year for small blue butterflies, we hope. But next to me is uh, a, a lovely June specialist plant in Northumberland, and indeed it's our county flower. This is Bloody Cranesbill. Its Latin name is Geranium sanguinium. Sanguinium means blood, which is related to the word that means blood. And um, for those of you who are gardeners, you'll be saying, oh, but that's a geranium. Well, it is. Um, its Latin uh, name, its genus is geranium. You can see it's got very divided leaves, much more divided than the sorts of geranium that we tend to grow in our gardens. Um, and the, the flowers, it's called bloody cranesbill because of the, the flower colour, but they're not really blood colour. They're really a deep, dark magenta purple, I think. Um, so it's our county flower of uh, Northumberland. So it's found on dunes all the way up the Northumberland coast. And why is it called a crane's bill? Well, if you take one of the pods, this is just about um, got its seed pod, and you can see that the, the pods are shaped like a bird's beak. And in bloody crane's bill, uh, the beak is quite short, but in some of them it's really long. It can be uh, two, two and a half, sometimes almost three centimetres long. And it's very much like a, a, a crane's bill. There's another group, stalks bills, they have the really long, uh, long pods. So this is bloody crane's bill, geranium sanguinium. Well now I'm standing next to some silverweed, Potentilla anserina in Latin. And it's a member of the sink foil family, which gives away its character. Sink, sac in French is five, and sink foils have, usually have five petals. There are some which have four, but most of them have five petals. And in most of them, the leaves are also in fives. They have five palmate lobes, like the fingers of a hand. But this one doesn't. It has the five, in this case, yellow petals, but you can see that the leaves are pinnate. And it's those leaves that give silverweed its English name because they are covered in long silvery hairs, particularly on the underside. And from a distance, from standing up, those leaves look 
grey green, silvery grey green uh, sticking out from between the darker green grasses and other plants. And they're very obvious. And of course the flowers are big too. They're large for, for native sink foils and they stand out. So it's quite an obvious plant. It likes growing on sand dunes but it would also grow in other disturbed habitats, on roadsides, even old industrial sites, it's quite happy to live in, um, I say, these sites and places which are disturbed. It doesn't mind rude or all man-made habitats. But here we are on a sand dune. This is much more of its normal native place. Silverweed, Potentilla and Serena. Sometimes on sand dunes you just have to get down close up and personal with a plant. And this is a small flower plant, it's very pretty, it's called a uh, common stalk's bill. Now I mentioned stalk's bills earlier on, and so it is related to the bloody crane's bill we saw. This one has much longer seed pods and is in a family of a genus called Erodium. Erodium secutarium. And unlike the uh, bloody crane's bill we saw earlier, this one has very finely divided pinnate leaves. And it has the same five petals as the um, bloody geranium, but in this case it, they're quite small and they're pink. Often I have to tell you they are very light coloured, almost white sometimes darker, but they have a very curious characteristic that we've not seen before, and that is that of the five petals, three are long and two are short, and that's very characteristic of um, this particular plant. So this is common stalks bill, and if we look at the pods, you can see that the bill part of the pod is much longer than uh, the ones we saw earlier on uh, in Bloody Crane's Bill. It's a very common seaside plant. It will grow down on the shingle, um, but it's, it's very happy up in sand dunes. It never gets much bigger than this, um, and you'll find it uh, all the way up and down the coast of Northumberland. Common stalks bill, Erodium cicutarium.